these wins early is good for the uh is good for the team morale. So we've loaded for into champ select sorry there were a few technical issues getting us before into this game but we are now in seeing the rengar as the first ban here from the side of Oculus. yeah icy girl rengar top otp I don't, i've i've said it uh from last week i would be surprised if a single team lets icy girl get rengar because I have a feeling that if it gets left open once, they will be one it. They will R1, R2 it. They do not care. Icy Girl is very, very comfortable in that champion. Uh, not only that, it's just such a strange champion you don't get to see, especially in the top lane, uh, yeah. in pro play. It's very, uh, it's very infrequent. And I mean, even thinking like globally, the only person I know that plays at top lane on a near consistent level is Whippo. And that kind of just goes to show, right? Uh, so. Ice Girl not going to get his hands on that one. Low Fire has the center removed away. Maybe London just sort of read it into the meta like we spoke about earlier on in the day. Center maybe sort of a pick that once gets experimented with a little more on 12-2 uh, will be looked at as one of those sort of very strong champions. Um, especially because the Sorry hasn't actually been nerfed at the moment, which is kind of the issue with the AD centers that we're seeing. Uh, but yeah, Akali followed up. Twisted Fate gone as well from Topi. I think that makes sense. Topi pretty much a, a TF OTP. Uh, but very, very strong on many other picks like we saw last bit on the UKLC. Trindomir, just all of, all of the bonkers stuff that you don't get to see frequently, Topi plays it. Uh, and of course, Caitlyn as well on that blue side. Very standard bands. The only thing that's sticking out to me that's still up is pretty much the Corky, but the Jinx is going to be matched. So uh, let's see whether or not Orglus, you know, go for something kind of out there, like a Corky first pick or whether they're just going to stay oh, sort Zin's of standard. Been as well. Yeah, Zin's been banned all day. Zin's open now. Uh, and Zin will be locked in here for Born This Way. Uh, and as well, I think in general, actually, I just realized, I don't know how, how it's taking this song. Arcane Teddy versus Icy Gale should be a pretty banger matchup uh, between these two top lanes. They both play very split push orientated uh, picks. Uh, but I think crucially, Icy Gale has red, uh, R5. So Arcane Teddy is going to have to think long and hard when we ever, whenever we do get to it about his blind pick because Icy Gale will almost certainly have a pick to lock into whatever Teddy brings up here. I feel like Fresh Corky is a pretty nice rotation here for London United if they want to go for something like that. Could just go straight into the bot lane and that looks like they're going to do that as they lock in the Aphelios here for KZ. So that's the bot lane sorted out. This does mean over to Orglus though. They can look for some way to answer that out. The Nautilus is nice. Just get the depth charge onto Divinus. Uh, sorry, onto KZ. He's going to follow you no matter what. And then they're actually going to take the Syndra here blind for Topi. I'm seeing a lot of pick already for the side of Orglus. It's quite scary what they put together. Yeah, a lot of single target burst damage. Uh, a little bit of AoE as well to mix in with it, some of the abilities. So I really like what Orglus have put together as well. Uh, very low sort of execution floor. Uh, already kind of met, realistically, when you lock in something like Nautilus of a Zin Zhao, and then the, the, it's actually going to be the Victor that's uh, drafted here into the Syndra lane. Uh, definitely quite interesting. I feel like a lot of the time, if you ask Victor players what some of the more annoying mids to play into, I feel like most of them will probably answer with, with Syndra. So uh, it's more or less just because of how much burst damage you can put out. Uh, Whilst as Victor, you're not necessarily stationary. I think the setup that Cinder provides for the, you know junglers to come in uh, and burst you down uh, is just very frustrating. And as in the mobile mage, you know dodging out scatter the week is just kind of difficult sometimes uh, if you don't have the movement. And yeah, let's see how Kuse tries to pull out the lane. Oh, she's getting banned. Yeah, Gwen on one side, Jax on the other. Both these teams are probably going to whittle down on the top lane pools. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to even see something like something crazy like a Fiora ban thrown out there. Camille would also be up on. Yeah, on, I feel on, like Camille's. Uh, definitely both, getting banned here right both these top laners um yeah like we said those of the split pushing tops uh, are likely what's going to be targeted away here there's the fiora from arcane teddy and yeah i mean if i'm orglus i'm just saying all right i'm not gonna let you get F i'm not gonna let you get camille then if you're not gonna get fiora uh, and i think they'll probably call it a ceasefire there because they can't ban any more champions anyway see what they're gonna ban i do feel like camille has to be the ban here mm -hmm. uh, unless arcane teddy is prepared for it and has something in mind or unless orglus um, Sorry, it depends on which way around, really, but yeah. Yeah, like if all of us want to lock it as well, they could and just ban something else. But yeah, there you go. Look, there goes Camille. Uh, all of the very like sort of premier S plus tier split pushers pretty much gone now. The game, the only things that really out split push now are things like maybe the Irelia, uh, maybe something like the Kale uh, still up there. Dunlo, so you're going to lock in his uh, Trundle here to try and match some of the early aggression. Uh, and you've got, you know, okay setup from the bottom side. Maybe the top lane also offers you a fair amount of setup as well. Uh, but definitely Trundle, especially with the lethal tempo. Uh, and you can go W Max as well. You can also still go into the Q Max, get all of the extra AD and the attack speed from lethal tempo. It makes him very, very hard to skirmish into one to one. Uh, and now looking at low fire for an AD carry, looks like we'll see the Jin. So just trying to sort of layer on top of the curtain call with all of the sort of dive that the Nautilus and the Zinzao will provide. And nice for Arcane Teddy. Are we going to see some extended out of this man? I, I doubt it. Uh, but maybe he does lean on something very traditional like the Gragas or uh, perhaps hmm. the Orn. But again, 
picking a tank into into icy gale is kind of risky business so i yeah i don't mind this renekton it's a very much kind of like a neutralizing pick there's not so much uh, up on the table now that icy gale can probably pick an out uh scale on the side lane in renekton as well as survive the lane uh, because of all of those second phase bands that we've seen so ice scale's pull definitely very pinched i'm curious to see what he's gonna want to pull uh okay. out of the bag here he could definitely do Jace, yeah. I think if he wants to go, like, sort of boring tank, then he probably picks Orn in this scenario, but... Yeah. Uh, let's see what Ice-Skill does. It's oh, that's a bit You're spicy! Funny. Okay, um... Well, much like his brother, he definitely suffers in this lane a lot, but I think there's uh, there's definitely room for outplay for ice Girl on the Yone into Renekton. But Renekton just deals so much early burst damage uh, that trading into him can be a bit of a nightmare, to be honest with you. Uh, but ice Girl, I mean, he's willingly locked in the Yone uh, in this matchup, so... You know, good luck, I suppose. I think if Born This Way really wants to shut down this lane, he's gonna he's gonna be able to relatively comfortably. No there matter how it looked. Yeah. There was a very brief moment where I was like, did they just set the Victor top? And like Ooh. that was like there was a brief moment. Now we're past that point at this point now, so that's not gonna happen. Um but there was a very brief moment where I was like, did they just put the Yone mid and Victor top? But now they're going to go for this Yone. Like you said, it's a pretty rough match. They could play a swap if they really think this is a yeah, terrible, I, terrible matchup. Because to me, I feel like the Yone matchup into Cinder is actually not that bad. Yeah. Uh, you can very easily go, sec you can go second win. You can go with the D shield and you can just soak up all the poke. Uh, farm pretty comfortably. Even find all in pressure if you find the right kind of timings for it. Uh, in between cooldowns and sort of like sort of trade attempts. And then as the Victor... Yes, you're definitely very prone to dives from Born This Way and Arcane Teddy. Uh, and I think in general, playing, I think if I remember it correctly, it was always Red Side Victor was always top was always the worst one, which you have more avenues to get ganked from, whereas Blue Side Victor is very, very easy to play. Uh, and I think that, you know, in this case, it's just very difficult, I think, to, to run Victor top uh, into Zinzara Necton on Red Side. I think it just offers too many opportunities to just get, like, ganked and, and do for free. Uh, so, yeah. Curious drafts on both sides. I think obviously Orgulus lie a little closer to traditional. Uh, they have a few more options in terms of the mid game. I think their scaling is okay, but I think it definitely gets eclipsed by London United. You've got Yone, who eventually will come online. You've got the Victor, you've got the Aphelios. Um, and I think in general, you kind of outrange for the most part a lot of what Orgulus has put together uh, yeah. for your two carries. So, uh, Orgulus, they're really going to have to use that Nautilus well to set themselves up for successful team fights. Otherwise, they're going to struggle because London United themselves don't have too much hard engage. So, uh, well, no hard engage at all, really, if you want to think about it. Only really Yone has, like, sort of hard engage. But going in solo as Yone into the team composition with Syndra, Zinzao, uh, and Renekton. It's risky business, and Anonolis as well. Uh, I wouldn't really want to be doing it. So I'm I'm expecting we're going to see a lot of London United responding to engages uh, from Orgulus as opposed to the other way around. It's just kind of hearts back to, I think it was the beginning of last year, where we used to have a lot of Yone showing up constantly on the board, and then they just kind of faded away a little bit. Making a return here. I'm excited to see how this goes. But yeah, you, you kind of nailed it in the sense where you're talking about the Renekton lane. Where, like, versus Yasuo. Renekton has an amazing time. You just Yone, it's a little bit hard. It, it's not as punishing because you obviously you've got the shadow. So you can kind of trade with your shadow and then blink back before it gets too hairy. But yeah. even so, it doesn't mean that that makes it any better. That, well, it makes it very slightly better, but doesn't make it good, right? Yeah, because like the Yasuo and Yone trading patterns are close enough to similar in lane uh, they're definitely very unique in their own right so obviously yone has the uh the soul unbound to sort of work around and i think especially when you do things like sort of trade first then maybe use the shadow after the fact to then try and get more sort of cheeky trade damage in after it's definitely very like sort of a possible way to even find all ins if the renekton is not respecting the damage uh in the very early phases that can come out from a yone and i think especially with lethal tempo uh which ice scale does have uh, you can underestimate how much dps uh, an all-attacking champion like Yone can put out. But again, like if, if we're seeing a very regular laning pattern where, you know, Renekton get, kind of gets control of the lane state and then he gets to pick and choose when his trades happen, uh, I expect Icy Gale will struggle a little bit, will fall a little bit behind in CS. Uh, but with this Yone pick is more or less going to be about the scaling into team fighting. Absolutely. Um, it's weird because I, I kind of forget about the, um, the lethal tempo build. Um on these champions because you know obviously got reworked during the uh, preseason is ever so different from where we were a little while ago we have had a pause unfortunately um as you see we were on our face for quite a while after champs that which meant there were a few technical issues these things happen so 
A bit more time to talk about everything else. Let's, uh, let's, let's fade away from the universe of Renekton, because exciting that is. Um, there's been a bit of a recent rise in the Victor as of late. Um, versus Syndra, is this just kind of like a farming lane because they're both mages or just going to... Yeah, I, I mean, I imagine Crusade's going to want to mostly farm. If you can find pressure, and I, w I wouldn't necessarily say a, you know, an all-in. I think it would be pretty hard for uh, Syndra on the opposite side on, on Tokyo yeah. Zen to actually get solo killed. Uh, so it's not like a, a super volatile lane, like you say. Two mages, they mostly want to farm it out. Uh, I think the closest Victor will get to sort of like finding that kind of pressure is just dropping the Chaos Storm on the wave. Maybe it also hits Syndra, uh, and he kind of just gets like free resets. And for Syndra, yeah, you know, a lethal is almost always in range when you sort of sit between that seventy percent uh, HP threshold, just because of how powerful the armor can be uh, in the early stages. And I'm just more looking towards the junglers, especially uh, the Zinzal pick to come and punish the Victor. Uh, come and make sure, you know, Born This Way comes in uh, and punishes Kruse uh, on the mobile mage, especially if they're able to blow the flash early on. I think that'll be the very crucial thing uh, for London United to try and make sure they're covering their mid laner because Victor is very prone to getting repeat yanked over and over again, especially because he doesn't actually have phase rush. Uh, he has airy. Um, so he, he just kind of remains immobile. Well, we are on to the rift for game number three, Orglus. One and one in the standings while London United 0 2. So, absolutely looking to try and find a bounce back today. And uh, they've got some spicy things. It's, it's also one of the main things about like picks like this Yone is you don't see it that often. It's been a while. Um, you know, they have an understanding. You know, Arcane Teddy will know how this lane should play, but it's been a while since maybe in theory he's played it out. Yeah. Um, so these are the kind of things you can catch people off guard. It's it's why that Renekton you were talking, not Renekton, sorry, the Rengar you were talking about is, you know, such a, a scary pick. Like, while it's not the most meta top player in the world, it's not something you're always used to playing into. So it can really catch you off guard. Yeah, like you just don't, you don't want to play into into people that you know have very, like, strange champion pools. And not only that, they're very proficient at that champion pool, right? Uh, yeah. I think in the instance... Uh, you know, of this Yone, like you say, it's not a matchup you're going to get to practice into very frequently, especially not in the top lane. You know, if this was the mid lane we we're talking about, then yeah, you know, there have been metas over the last oh. year and a half, two years, where Yone pops into metal, uh, whether it's because of the AP junglers or, or otherwise, uh, he has come in and out relatively infrequently. In the top side, though, it's not something we see too often. I think the only time I used to see the Yone was as an answer into the Aatrox, which even then, I never quite understood that matchup, to be honest with you. Uh, I always felt like Aatrox still had a pretty okay time into it. Uh, but yeah, Icy Gale would have picked it for a reason. Would have felt very comfortable uh, playing into Arcane Teddy's Renekton, as unfortunately we do get another pause uh, on oh, our nice. screen. It's like technical issues might be plaguing us for the time being. Well, we got to see a little bit of learning phase. Um, <laughs> level 2 came through for the side of London. Um so they got the, they got that advantage in the bot side. Mid lane, fighting as expected, but not really, really too much to come from that. But it's it's obviously gonna be a bit of a slow one. I think the I think the focus should be really on the junglers now. Um we've got this trundle, we've got this Zinzal, both very capable of finding the ganks. You've always got the pillar, it's an incredible tool for setting up a gank. Um and then, you know, obviously it's Zinzal. Wind becomes lightning into the dash. Um and then the free talent strike. There's, you know, they both got they've got got tools to set themselves up for ganks, and not and completely reliant on their lanes to set them up. So that being said, where do you think the attention is going to be for the junglers? Are they going to be looking to fight each other, or are they going to be looking to go into lanes? Yeah, I mean, I think lanes definitely. I think you don't as the Zinzao, you probably could win the the duel with Trundle, but I think Trundle is just going to stat check you with with lethal tempo. I think he's just going to attack too many times. He's going to have too much AD. Uh, and I think especially once you go past level 6, the subjugate just makes that even worse. Yeah. Uh, with the stat steal itself. Uh, so I'm expecting, especially on the on Born This Way side, to probably attack the lanes. I think the solo lanes has got the best setup, right? You've got Renekton in the top side into Yone, who's very immobile, removing, you know, the the, the Q3 and then the Ormit. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the mid lane where, again, saw the same thing. Victor's very immobile. If you can find him on the wrong side of the lane, you're normally going to kill him uh, in most circumstances. Or at the very bare minimum, you will blow his flash. Uh, and I think even on the bomb side, decent setup. You've got the Nautilus down there uh, with the Jin. Three strong lanes uh, to go and pick on. I think Dunlosi, honestly, almost the same. You've got two lanes of really solid setup, and then once you only hit level six, you've got the additional form of CC slash knockup to work around as well. Yeah, it's their tools. There's tools in plenty There's of lanes for them. Yeah, yeah, it's honestly, it's it's not just like the junglers can set themselves up. They've got so many tools in their lanes. Like 
Victor probably offers the least on his team for London, um, just because all you really have is the gravity field slow. Maybe if you can get lucky and get the, the stun off it, but realistically, you're probably not going to see that out of him. Um, I'm curious, actually. I want to get your thoughts on Victor, because obviously they did change him a little while back. Um, it was last year yeah. they changed him. We did have a little bit of him show up then. He doesn't need his hex score anymore. Um, no, it's been a very long time since he's needed his hex yeah. score. In fact, I don't even think it was last year. It might have been the year before. I think it was. Has it actually. been that long? Man, COVID, COVID changed everything. I like every, It feels like they okay. did that. Like, it feels like I'm going to make everyone feel upset. I'm going to make everyone feel upset. When, when that started, I was 20. I am 23 next month. It's been a long time. I forget you're such a baby. I am a baby, I know. I always yeah. forget about that. But uh, no, Victor Victor has changed, uh, obviously. At the moment, uh, like the highest damage per, well, per, per minute build in general, the highest damage per second build at the moment is definitely a, a Luden Shadow Flame and, of course, the Luden Boots. Uh, Luden Boots. Uh, the <laughs> Sork Pen Boots. <laughs> Sorcery Shoes. Um, just because you get so much flat pen, right? Yeah. Uh, and Shadow Flame also offers 100 AP. Uh, which is kind of bonkers to think about. Uh, so you can blow up squishies, absolutely, uh, with that build path. The other one, of course, uh, is more defensive builds like Crown, maybe a tier as well. Uh, these are typically the build options you see out of Kuse, or out of the Victor, sorry. Uh, and it will usually render him quite safe or quite high in burst damage. Now, this is what he's talking about. Icy Gale on the Yone, very, very immobile, and there is so much burst damage that can come out. If he can get Q3 primed, he has a bit Trying of a chance of making it. out of this one. Things back, jumps Whoa. out, gets himself completely collapsed on, but the no gravity way. field is huge. He no flies way. out! Icy Gale, what the hell was that? Beautiful outplay. Icy Gale just broke all three of the Orglas top side's ankles with that one. <laughs> Born this way, forced to flash, and oh, still no. goes down. That's a hook. That's a hook miss, followed by a hook hit. Gonna get burnt down, toasted, and Divinus will fall. Peep secures the kill, and now KZ is on his lonesome. Has got oh, the backup, though. We'll in comes the pillar. In goes the gravity as well, but they're not going to follow up with anything else. Hey. Although they may just turn it back around. Peep is possessed right now, just landing ability after ability. Whew, that, was, that was a hypey couple of moments. Yeah, it was indeed. Unfortunately, they can't really chase through uh, threat. Oh, no. From... <laughs> oh, no. I've seen this song and dance before. <laughs> I mean, he has double buffs and lethal tempo stacked up. He's probably fine. Yeah, wait, he's actually doing some bonkers he's probably right fine. now. He's going to go down, though. Flash from Arcane yeah. Teddy will secure the kill. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, he used the Spirit Cleave, the W, uh, before he had lethal tempo fully stacked up. So the cooldown was actually quite lengthy still. Um, so he will lose that double buffs. Is going to go back over to Arcane Teddy. But I feel like the damage is kind of done for the most part off the or original play. I will say... Uh, Ice Scale is probably going to miss all of that wave. I think that is no no cannon in the top side. So uh, he's going to miss a fair amount of it. Probably had the home guard boost because he died so early. And uh, isolated. But uh, there is going to be a level lead now for Arcane Teddy to work around. Uh, but away from the top side, you can see here uh, Dunlosi taking away the jungle camp. He's got the priority in the mid lane. Also has Divinus in his back pocket. And of course, born this way, actually matching that, which has a rough idea of what's going on in his bottom side jungle. Well, Dragon is up. And it does look like London are leaning towards the aerial, though. KZ is forced under his tower, so he might not be able to move over. And we can see Icy Gale get the outplay of the century here. Yeah, so Spirit Unbound gets away from Arcane Teddy, and it means he has to commit the first slice. Actually, does connect, so he is able to dash back out, and the stun does come through. But you see, Born This Way also commit the dash. So now he has to flash in to try and find lethal damage. The gravity field comes in from the teleport, and it's just enough to slow down uh, Born This Way to take enough all attacks. And as well, that final Spirit Cleave, I believe, also blocked the final all attack coming out from Syndra. Uh, and kept Yone alive. So, really well played from Icy Gale. When I said Icy Gale wasn't too mobile on these dives, maybe I lied a little bit if you can play it out like that on a very consistent basis. But now you can see this is where things get really painful for this lane. Double buffs, a lane freeze. You can't really walk up anymore. And especially now, I mean, look at this Born This Way. It's just here to harass. Uh, and it's going to be a good couple of ways that Icy Gale is likely going to miss because Arcane Teddy is going to probably keep this wave uh, frozen for as long as he can. And now it turns into a situation where Dunlosi has to come up here and come and break this freeze. The issue with that, however, is Dunlosi is on the bottom side getting Dragon. Yeah. Um, they are going to be able to pick this one up as well. No real uh, contest coming in. And this is this is what, this is is what the price you pay. If you're going to try and deny the Yone and get him out of the game, you're probably not going to be able to get any Dragons this game. And that is something you do need to keep in mind. So, may need to look to try and... 
ignored this top so bad. It's uh, ICL did get a kill, but so has Arcane Teddy. Arcane Teddy had the lane set up and uh, picked up a pretty big lead already in this lane as far as the farm goes. So if you can just continue to freeze lanes, ICL's pretty much done in this lane for now. Yeah, really needs the bailout here. Uh, I'm not sure. No, we might. No, no, no. is just roaming down just to grab some of the fruits. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to see anything down here. Can we get a look at the top lane state just for a second? Yeah, still frozen. So you can see Arcane Teddy is about to hit level 6 off those uh, off this melee here and also that range creep at the back. And oh, 7, mate. Se oh, seven. My bad. <laughs> Maths is hard, apparently. Uh, but the, the, the freeze is actually starting to break now. So it's going to slow push back into Icy Gale. Well, I think this is probably, was probably intentional uh, here for Arcane Teddy, but... Uh, at least I scale will pick up the Krugs to sort of like make up for some of the, the CS lost. And the wave will now come back into him, but the XPC lead is still quite large. Yes. Uh, and it's going to definitely feel very hard now to lane uh, one to one into this Renekton for a little while. The CS lead growing over 20 CS. And it's not like he's going to make up loads of that CS with this wave either. It's only going to be about half of that. Uh, best, assuming he's allowed to farm it, because I mean, look at the minimap, look where Born this way is, look where Peep is also making his way towards. The They're built up way. Again. That smells like a dive to me. Yeah. I think Gale does have the fate sealed, and his jungler is closing in. Same with the Venus, so yeah. some backups coming in. Born this way is actually going to make this as take this opportunity to try and pick up the Rift Tail. They know that I see Gale's not going to come over. He wants to get the farm. It's the CS lead is absolutely massive now. Yeah. So this is going to be a free Rift Herald and that could get used top lane just to completely shut Icy Gale down. Or they could use it to try and crack open mid or at least do some damage to mid lane. So we'll see where they decide to go with it. But Rift Herald on board this way for now. So Icy yeah. Gale's just trying to hard shove this wave in. Going to get stunned up and pick up most of this wave before pinging back. Yeah, the issue is now Argon did it just freezes the wave again. again. Oh. And it's just really painful. We even might stop this recall as well. No, I'm just going to land base. Probably the right call. Because now... This whole minion wave just falls to the wayside. I'm going to be collected by anybody on uh, Lunge United side. And yeah, I mean, actually, we had a, a flash of the gold values not too long ago. Despite the 20 CS gold lead, you can see Icicle is actually not that far behind in flat gold. It's mostly just the they experience. Get first blood. Yeah, they get first blood, which is making up for Evolve. Uh, the difference here. And the lead will certainly grow on this particular freeze. Actually, oh. Icicle feels... He's so feeling it a little lane. bit, but he's going to have to blink back to safety. He jumps away. They jump under the tower for him. Gets oh. the fake sealed off. I think no. This top lane is unleashed right now. Topi going to get snared. Chaos stormed in. The laser beam was and almost got enough damage. Can he get that last death ray off? No, he oh, cannot. And meanwhile, in the bot side, they're going to just find themselves a double kill down there. Yeah, I mean, London are just like... on fire. Yeah, I mean, hold this freeze all you want. Isagale roamed, they got a kill. <laughs> I'm sure Arcane Teddy is not so happy about that one. But on the bottom side, it just seems like ganks out. Flash into maybe a double flay would be my best guess. Uh, with the remainder of the setup uh, here. And obviously Don Losi did come in uh, for the gank assist. We'll probably get a replay of uh, the bottom side play pretty soon, I imagine. But yeah, mid lane, born this way. Not quite familiar with Icy Girl's ability to just limit test on command, apparently. Uh, the most frustrating uh, thing about Yone is how much CC he has. It's it, bonkers yeah, it, how much crowd control it, that champ has. Yeah, in the in the like frustrating kind of moments like this, where you know he has the knock up. In this case, he obviously uses it defensively. Snaps away, doesn't get that last portal in. You think, okay, flash will they charge? Okay, well, he's got the flash, and now he just fate charge, uh, fate sealed back in. Gets the auto and the shield as well back. It's never a point where they could have killed him. Okay, so the death sentence actually misses, and it's... Oh, it's Orglus that recommit. Oh, a lantern. All right, okay. So, peep. And, unfortunately, himself lo fi just weren't quite aware that Lucy was waiting. Uh, it turns oh, into hold on. Good players. Yeah, these guys do. Teddy's taking tower shots. A big heal comes down. But that is going to be a pick up for the Trundle. And I see Gale's going to be able to grab this wave as well. You can camp him all you like, but this does not look like a tilted Yone. This looks like he is playing this matchup very well. This is how you weak side. Yeah, this this is very reminiscent, and I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to boost his ego. For any high elo players that have ever played with Zukil, who have him run down the first 10 minutes of the game, but he's still Zukil, so he just outplays everybody. 
This is very reminiscent of that because Orgless are just camping this man. They're sending numbers to him. In this case, they're not actually like finding too much in terms of kills. Yes, you can see the CS difference is massive. And finally, that's actually culminated in an item differential between the two uh, of Icy Gale and Arcane Teddy. But I mean, Arcane Teddy doesn't actually have boots at all. So Icy Gale was making up some of those stats there. It's just the full item completion at the moment, which oh, wow. uh, I mean, given how Icy Gale's uh, been playing. No flash. Oh, minion. Okay. Well, minion. Get behind me, Mr. President. <laughs> minion doesn't care about it. Uh, so yeah, doing absolutely fine. And we focus so heavily on the top side. We haven't really taken a look at the other lanes and the states that they're actually in. To be honest with you, now this mid lane going to get chunked out quite heavily. But the bottom side, KZD's made it that Gale Force uh, quite quickly, honestly. I think it was about an 11 and a half minute, maybe 11 minute Gale Force. Uh, no boots on him, but uh, low fire on the opposite side. Swifties and Noon Quiver, that's all. Uh, that the Orgulus AD carrier sat with. Uh, no, he's fine. Oh, he's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I, I always thing. panic when I see a Yone use Soul Unbound like that on top of someone. It's just like, yeah. where are you gonna go? <laughs> what are you? What are you gonna do? Yeah, but uh, for now, some of the trading plans will definitely feel uh, quite bad. Well, just because the uh, additional heal from Gordrinka, but that was second dragon picked up by London United. Orgulus not in a position to contest it, uh, and that will mean. It's Infernal Point, or not Infernal Point, Infernal Rift, and two dragons pre-13 minutes picked up for London United. Spells potentially a very early dragon soul win condition. As gold's up on our screen, only major differential really is the bottom side where it's about 800 gold. Other than that, everyone else is, you know, 100, 200, 300 at worst uh, between each other. So KZ being found with a lot of those uh, plates on the bottom side. It seems like the back of the ganks have really been beneficial to him a level up or two levels up actually on low fire right now maybe the wave that low fire catches levels him up it does but still a full level at the very least a uh, pretty big deal for any carries yeah i think yeah, i was gonna go off to base fairly soon probably we'll have that uh shield bow finished up somewhat soon as well although does want to hang around just another 20 seconds and try and deny arcane teddy the plate uh and will actually do so as arcane <laughs> teddy uh just jumps under the tower and says yeah i know you want a recall so it doesn't matter uh, respectable from both ends, honestly, you know. Oh, they were going for a four man as well. Yeah, Icy Girl, he reached the map well in this instance. You know, the mm. moment looks a little bit uh, suspect. As, oh, uh, oh, he's got suspect. the lantern, he's got a victor coming in as well. Low fire under fire, and he is toasted. Yeah. Fraser makes quick work of the Orgless AD carry. And it's just a nice little pick from Divinus. Had the vision uh, and makes good use of it as bottom side tower will fall in London United's favor as well. So that's a kill uh, and that pick uh, going in favor of London United. And those are some of the more you know, irritating traders. Here you go, Kusei getting picked on here, has the flash. Yeah, he's able to jump away. The gravity field gets the lockdown. They've got the pillar as well, born this way. Gonna throw out the wind becomes lightning. Oh. Po a peep under a lot of damage, actually. Yeah. They might just be able to kill him with a Chaos Storm. Hook from Divinus goes between the goalposts, meanwhile. Okay, Hope he unleashes power. Oh, the Lantern Shield. Just enough to keep him alive. Yeah, and whilst all of this was happening, uh, you might notice Arcane uh, Teddy's dead. How did that one v one him. And just the only things, I guess. That. We'll probably get a replay in a moment uh, of both the mid side play and uh, the top side solo kill. But yeah, I mean, in the mid lane, uh, because Peep's gone for that aftershock option, as soon as that Losi gets world attacked by the Nautilus, he just says, well, okay, you're getting subjugated, probably goes into pretty much negative uh, resist. Says, let's get a look. Top side play looks pretty good for Arcane Teddy. The shield as well. The Shilbo shield is not massive, but just gets that checked. Oh, no. Ooh, wow. It's the, it's the pop damage from Soul Unbound. You, do, you just underestimate it, yeah. it at times. And it wasn't even that crazy in this instance. He literally ordered him once. Maybe it was a crit. And it dealt like an extra 70 damage, 60 damage. But that's enough to execute in a, in a close 1v1 like this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this girl just finds the outplay. Nothing more to say. You can understand why Arkane Teddy will go for a trade like that, though. It definitely seems very positive. Didn't have Ultima either, uh, Icego, I don't think. So trying to use the Ultima economy to his advantage, but can't find it. Now, Icego, more than online. Shield Boat plus Pickaxe. Going to be making the way towards the Infinity Edge second. Don't need to go into a zeal anymore because you've got the lethal tempo attack speed. Just makes that second item spike so much more oppressive. Both of the mid laners have made their way down to the bot side of the map as uh, Icy Gale 
Just continue to trade versus Arcane Teddy, feeling himself a little bit now that he's 3-1 and he's got the level advantage over his lane opponent. Although Arcane Teddy going to try and stat check him here. Although it's still a shield bow on, yeah, on the Onei. Okay, he probably shouldn't have taken two shower shots. But he's still got the shield bow on armor, so he's probably okay with that as teleport comes down. It's just preparation for this dragon, which spawns in 30 seconds of London United get it. Soul point. And they might have oh, actually found born this way. Into the gravity field. They're going to look for the fight. The curtain call goes down. Divinus under fire. KZ gets a big moonlight vigil off, and they find the shutdown onto the jungle. Divinus, Ooh. next up, that is two for none in favor of Orglus. Yeah, and that's London United that opts into that fight as well. That's not Orglus saying, all right, we want to fight. They were on the retreat, but as soon as they recognize London United, they step too far into the choke. They just punish the frontliners. Divinus and Dunlosi, they're not that tanky. Divinus is a, a Glacial Augment Thresh. And even though Dunlosi, I think, actually subjugated Peep whilst he had the Aftershock on, just doesn't have the HP values to stay alive uh, long enough as now we... Uh, this is a 1v1 waiting to happen. Oh, misses the Fate Seal. The Shield Bow's being popped, so he's able to jump away. But Ultimate for Ultimate traded out. But KZ is making his way up as they've recognized they have to just give this dragon. And they may try and translate this into that tower in response. Yeah, they might try and turn it into the tower. Game of inches, that 1v1. That knock up, the ultimate lands. Maybe looks a little bit different for London United and Isagale. They could pick up this top tier one uh, in trade, but it's not found in this instance. And now, Orglus get to push into the bottom side jungle for free. They get to pick up this bottom tier one for free as well after the pick and after the dragon. So a little bit of a gold swing back in Orglus' favor. Definitely going to help them out a little bit because some of the lane states definitely very London United favored. Uh, obviously, the focus has been very much on the top side. It's the only volatile lane we really have. And it's drawn a lot of our attention. Definitely going to bring low fire and Topi back in uh, to the fold. Especially Topi 101. Perfect CS. You know, more than 10 CS per minute. Has the Ludens, has the Sork Pen Boots. He can blow up KZ or Kuse pretty much on command right now. Yeah, he really can. Very, very strong. Syndra's burst. You were talking about it at the beginning of the game. It's one of the frustrating things about Syndra. She's just capable of doing a lot of damage and she has the outplay button. And there's not much you can do about that one, unfortunately. London are leaning a lot of members towards this top side of the map. Going to steal away a couple of jungle camps. Blue, bluff, blue, blue buff included. Denying that from Topi. And they should be able to take this tier one in the top side, which means all of the tier ones will now be fall, have fallen. So London will be quite happy with that one. They got themselves a 2,000 gold lead. It's about to grow a little bit more there. Closing in on a 3,000 gold lead. And be able to go back to base, spend that gold and get back onto the map. Baron Nasher spawning in 30 seconds. I don't think we'll see a spawn Baron, although it's not particularly slow from the side of uh, London. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's very, it's very quick. On yeah, <laughs> yeah, on London side is very quick. Yone, uh, and of course, Aphelios with the uh, Chakram and Severum, uh, red and white, will absolutely melt a Baron. Uh, and a lot of very easy to use zoning tools as well uh, from Dunlosi, Crusade, Divinus. To keep members of Orglus out, albeit Orglus will no less probably try and brute force in if that is the scenario. As the Baron has spawned up, we'll see if it becomes an option. As a uh, oh my Orglus. word, they're still Dodges on the top away. side. He's got back up though. Kusei, I think you might be dead. Unfortunately, depth charge comes down. Stop watches a little bit of stuff. Does have the flash goes to oh. try and turn it around onto Toby for the hook connects, and there's the deadly flourish. There's the finisher. Born this way, we'll seal the deal. Kusei will go down. You know what? You can respect the attempt from Kusei there because it also blows Topi's flash as well. And I think that's actually the crucial thing because now one of the sort of key carries, and I think honestly the strongest carry right now on Orglus, flashless for any future engagement. Uh, Kusei makes the best of the worst uh, of a bad scenario. Orglus will pick up this tower in response. It just seems like Orglus, you know, whoever's in this top lane, right? It's like kind of a global taunt. Icy Gale <laughs> put up for the, <laughs> the early game. Kusei is now unfortunately the victim. Of the three and four man dives as Monday night get the mid lane prior and could actually nearly get collapsed on if August maybe had uh, a little more time to work with some ultimates maybe from Born This Way for a flank, but not willing to force the play. I think that's 20 minutes brushed by. We'll touch on the items. Uh, I think Icy Gale sitting very comfortably with that IE and uh, Shield Bow, of course, on the bottom side as well. KZ, two items. Those are the places where the big item differentials are. But other than that, right now, pretty much item for item, component for component across the board uh, in other places. So if KZ do fight, uh, if KZ do fight, if London do fight with their carries KZ and Icy Gale uh, in the area, you would imagine that for now, the uh, fight should go in their favor. 
in more cases than none. It's a very scary fight to take. Yes. When you've got the red and white gun. So I think they're probably going to... London... Uh, uh, not sorry, London. Orglis are probably going to try and avoid fighting. Yeah, wait this is KZ's guns. Yeah, this is tricky though. So I'm not sure how much ammo KZ has in the white guns. And whether or not Orglis are about to try and engage on KZ because they think he's alone. But KZ is still going to have to deal with another wave or two. He's going to have to cycle through some ammo out of the chakra rooms. Otherwise, he's going to have to cycle into another gun, I think. Yeah. Um, again, he needs to oh, He's about equal on both. So he's probably in the next fight going to run out of probably both. And I think it will cycle into green and... Sorry, I'm being a bit of a nerd here. Green and I think blue. I think, I think it's blue after I, I, so, I can't really remember them half the time. Yeah, I think it depends on a couple of other things, but normally that's close enough to the order. I couldn't entirely be wrong, to be honest with you, but uh, we'll see. He's going to have it for the start of the fight, and that's the important thing. Get the initial DPS out. Get the Charcom stacks. Ooh, nice scatter Ooh. into the nice hook. There's the curtain call. Fight's breaking out. Chaos Storm is there, and KZ is instantly zoned out. He's got the right guns, but he doesn't have the opportunity to find the knock-up in the meanwhile. Born this way, going very, very low, but able to survive. Another scatter gets dodged. There's the laser beam coming out from Kusei, but KZ was just completely zoned from entering the fight. And now they're down their jungler. London is still going to try and pressure up forward here. Born this way, pretty low HP. And KZ has no jungler. Got the white and purple. So it's still okay oh. for team fighting with the Graviton. Yeah. Not I as think effective. Need to cycle out the Chakram, though. Get a better gun combination than this. Uh, I think if you can get something like green and, and blue, you're fine. But green and purple, it's the worst gun combination on the Felios by a country mile. Yeah. Uh, so get rid of that chakram, cycle into the infernum, uh, or even honestly, like green purple is probably better than green white, uh, and that's a fight you can take. But I mean, Orglus, they take their foot off the off the gas, and it means that London United gained Dunlosi back, and they actually just go straight onto the dragon. And, and you can take a look at the mini map. Orglus are just not in a position to contest this at all. Step away for a moment, give London the objective, and now London United. Very, very happy with the position there. And one away from Soul. Items are in. Kusei got the Shadow Flame as well. My Death Cap matched on the opposite side from Topi. Definitely not what we always see. I'd be curious to know about, you know, the specific maths about Shadow Flame against Decap. It's a, it's a massive amount of, of flat AP, but sometimes the magic pen, especially in a game like this where, I mean, nobody on London United actually has any magic resist. I'm not sure if the Shadow Flame would actually do more or less damage. Because uh, of how it works with high HP targets. But Scatter the Week into the hook as well from Peep. You know, Subjugate can only save you so much uh, HP and resistances, and Dunlosi isn't quite able to get out, unfortunately. And Why I mean, actually, I'm not too oh. sure about what kills him is a bullet from Chin's ultimate. Uh, I think he could have been behind Divinus. I, I yeah. don't know if that was like a misclick or what, but that was yeah, a bit of it, an interesting one. Definitely a bit Meanwhile, if I break out, this hook's going to land from Divinus, and Peep is popped. They're going to chase onto Born this way. They've already used the pillar, though, so they're just going to get the challenging smite off for the moment as they continue the chase up. Born this way gets the slow off. The wind becomes lightning, oh. but he's going to jump in straight onto KZ. Pops himself the ultimate. Kusei gets a shield off, and he is almost going down. Shot out by the Jin. Divinus lands the hook. The pillar actually completely denies them from anything. And low fire almost might be able to finish this one up. The red buff oh. will give him the burn oh. and the double kill. KZ is trying to kill Arcane Teddy. We'll force him to flash away. And now it is just a solo trundle all alone with nowhere to go. Orglus are going to make London United teamless as only two players stand. Oh, the way you said that, I don't know what I'm... It you know, came I'm across touch way that. worse than it meant to be. <laughs> I'm glad you got what I understood. Yeah, As, yeah. Uh, I, Orglis, I said it and went, oh, that wasn't what uh, I meant. Orglus pick up the very strong team fight <laughs> in the top side. London United kind of overreach, looking for low fire. And it means that the rest of Orglus can catch up and pick up the overreaches that were London United in this play. London United, they still actually know they've fallen behind in gold. It's not too much. But at this point in the game, the gold leads start to matter less and less. Execution becomes uh, king. I think you also have to start talking about the scaling. The flat amount of damage that Lunge United can put out with their carries uh, definitely will start to eclipse what Orglus have. But the front line, the CC, the burst damage, these are all things that Orglus can use to their advantage because they are dealing with a pretty squishy lineup on the opposite side of Lunge United. So it's not like the outright one-to-one -one scaling is going to immediately win uh, their games uh, or their game here. 
uh, in to Orgulus. They have to use the damage well. They have to stay alive. They have to avoid getting CC'd and burnt down. They can do that. Definitely have a very fun time, but Orgulus. The CC up is so easy. So they really have to be very careful about how they approach things. Chokes in particular are going to be very dangerous. Things like Fog of War, like this. I mean, if we toggle the red vision, Ooh. this is just this is vision. This is exactly what we were just talking about. Orgulus. They can just flank, walk around here if they really wanted to. Kill KZ, no flash, it'll be pretty easy, but I feel like there's maybe not enough information on the opposite side of the jungle uh, to make something like that happen. Oh, Kusei. <gasps> Kusei! Do it. Oh, Kusei. oh he checks the push! Thing. Good job, Kusei. Spider sense is tingling there. Yeah. They've wasted a lot of time in that bush as well. It indeed. But I mean, right now it's, it's dead time. Well, I like to call dead time. Dead uh, time. Yeah, no, I mean, well, well, Baron is technically up on the map, but neither team really feels comfortable playing into it. So I call it dead time, where there's no real neutral objective to actually fight over. I call it bedtime because I sleep. Ah. Very smart, Jake. Very smart. Can I give you one golden star for the rhyming? <laughs> I'm up to two. <laughs> I'm up to two. <laughs> Work harder. Maybe you can have your third one by the end of the <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> Oh, did you man. have that? Did you have that in school, by the way? This is definitely a very like English no, school thing. Did you have golden no, stars in primary I school? Go, I didn't go to a bad school. We just w okay. Hold on. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I can hear my producer laughing. Nothing, mate. Absolutely What's nothing. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> huh? I bet the English viewers in chat will remember very fondly about gold stars in primary school. Thank you very much. Bro, I went to school in England as well. What are you talking about? What? what the, how do you know? What do you mean you went to a bad school and you don't? We just didn't, well, they didn't have to have a reward system to make us act right. We just didn't act like idiots. We acted right and still had the reward system. What year was this? What school year? <laughs> I, I need to know. Uh, we'll, talk about after, oh, we'll talk about after the action because something's about yeah. to happen. I could, I could say, there you go. <laughs> You're right. The curtain's been caught. The fate has been sealed and it's not in favor of Icy Gale. GA's gonna get popped. Coming in for the hook, onto Peep. Peep's gonna get melted. Look at KZ's gun. He's ready oh, to pop up as the Moonlight Vigil goes down. They've traded out one kill already, but born this way, slowed and taken down. That is gonna be a quick two kills for London. Yeah, London United, they're the ones that get aggressed on, but Orgulus, I mean, they just don't find the burst damage onto the key targets. And I mean, even looking at the summoner spells, none of the carries oh, on London even flat. Fire? Where's Lofi? Oh, oh, oh no. Lo -fi's dead. Yeah, Lofi is very dead. I actually missed how that happened. I, I think Divinus death sentence. I'm just going to question mark and say yes. I think uh, but... it was just a lot of bursts from Victor. All right. Nothing more, nothing less. London United, they pick up the Infernal Salt. And they will now make their way over to the Baron as well. This will be a very free pickup. Double buff stacked over them. How are they going to use this now? It's a very massive advantage when your carries can so easily apply the Infernal uh, buff as well. I mean, you can see it's proccing pretty much every couple of woes between... Uh, KZ and Icy Gale. I think this is where scaling might start to take over. The once one scaling might just be what will get London United over the finish line here. Orglus, they really have to pull something out of the bag at this kind of deficit. Blow up one of these carries. I mean, they do a good enough job, but it's onto the one target with GA. I mean, Icy Gale, you know, gets kind of caught out here. Yes, is doesn't really get anywhere with the face sealed, but crucially, he just buys so much time, and it means that Arcane Teddy, you can see on the front line, she gets bursted. By the, uh, stopwatch as well. by the storm, and it's just a stopwatch into like everything as well. It's just so obnoxious from Icy Gale. Uh, it's probably not something you're really, you know, thinking about. You see, the the GA go down, and you're like, okay, well, he's not gonna have stopwatch. He does, oh, and then I, it's low fat. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Low grunt of disapproval from Jamada. <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, yeah, that was that was a good one. <laughs> um. What school year was it then? Uh, <laughs> all right. It, it, 2004, probably. 2004 through like 2008. I nine. started secondary school in 2004. Yeah, I'm aware you're a fossil. We've gone over this before, Jake. We know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I just heard my producer drop dead laughing there. <laughs> I just heard a fud, and that's what I assume happened. I'm not that old. Well, you know. I hate the fact the scoundrel's gone. He was I, the old man. He yeah, was our he was. granddad. I, he was quite literally the group's father. That's what he was really great was. About the around. I miss, miss you, old man. Hope you're watching the broadcast. You're probably not. Probably busy doing grown-up stuff, but that's not. Oh, I was speaking to him about 20 minutes ago, actually. 
Oh, okay. Well, well, the game's been going on for 31 minutes, Jake, so what's... what's, what's... <laughs> You're just so boring, mate. <laughs> Uh, Tell you what, not boring. This burst from Victor. That, oh, oh my god. god! That's where you go, Shadow Flame. By the way, he did yes. so much damage through the shield. And oh, 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 oh my! All right, back to base, everybody. Organist Born this on way. Retreat. Yep. Probably has the squeakiest bum right now after that. <laughs> See, okay. Now I opened up chat because I assume that people people know about the Gold Star system, Jake. Okay, you're just old. People that yeah, 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 yeah. Did you have those projectors at school? Uh, which kind? The like ones the, where uh, the ones that like light project thing. down on, on yeah. onto the like little thing. It's like a scanner more than anything. So it's like yes. a, it reads yes. off the paper. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, born this way. Born this way. I don't think that is the way. I think you're gonna be going down, friend. As they jump over the wall. <laughs> oh, look at that. I think he'll jumps over. Gets one. Gonna mop up a second one. The Renekton, though, popping off with a double kill. Picked up. Nice Goes kill. in for an instant stopwatch. But Arcane Teddy is cooked. He is fried. He is down. And Icy Gale with the triple kill on the Yone. Just like that. London snapped their fingers. And Ace Orglas. Yeah, I mean, it's just too much. You know, stacked up buffs. They had the Baron at the very start of the fight. They have the Infernal Dragon. Like I said, I just felt like the one to one scale of the composition the amount of damage that these carries can do at this point in the game just is going to carry them over the finish line and unfortunately Orglus cannot find a successful way to actually team fight into london anymore they don't can't quite utilize the the chain tc that is inside the composition the depth charge the sky of the week they can't find the key targets they have to icy gale doesn't care about his kda and london united will finish up this game and pick up their first win of the split turns out the owner was quite a good pick and yeah. if I'm going to be completely honest with you, that was really, really fantastic from Icy Gale. And I don't just mean like the late game. Honestly, no considering that was a it. rough matchup and then you get three man dived to be able to turn that around and find first blood. Then recognizing how doomed your lane is, go bot lane, bait born this way into a tower dive and then blow him up. And then recovering the laning phase and then late game becoming a monster. Very, very impressive stuff from Icy Gale. I really, really have to uh, give props to him on that one. But anyway, we are going to cut to a very quick break. And when we're back, we'll talk to one of the members of uh, London United after that win. So see you in a moment. <laughs> 